Hi, it's Rich with Richbaum Photography, Sacramento, California. And as you know, I hope that you know, we have real estate photography videos which are showing you uh, the gear, the uh, techniques, the editing, the, uh, you know, we're doing uh, composition, all kinds of stuff. Really trying to help you understand how to shoot better, get better photos, and uh, just get better clients, better jobs, anyway. So I'm redoing my pole photography video because the original one was a little a little bit uh, hazy, let's say, from my iPhone. So I'm doing it with my Sony A6000 right now. And uh, I just want to show you the benefit, want to tell you the benefits and show you how I build it a pole. Now, pole photography is really beneficial because getting your camera up, this tripod I'm shooting now on, you can't see it because I've got a camera on it, but I can get up about here, which is pretty darn high, which is great, but sometimes I want to get higher. And there are things on the market called uh, Mega Mask. There is Manfrotto Super, Ma uh, Super Tripods. I don't know the exact term for them, um, but and they go up to uh, probably 25, maybe 30 feet. Um, but the problem is, they're heavier, they're, they're harder to set up, and even a few seconds longer for me can really make a difference between me getting in and out fast. And I want to get in and out fast, the most photos I can take, and get the best quality. And also be safe with my equipment. That's why I'm making this tutorial. But I have found that this works for me, and uh, I wouldn't use anything else. And uh, I will say that some of the other uh, operations you can use to uh, shoot bracketing. I don't use bracketing for my um, pole photography, although sometimes for twilights I might attach this to a Manfrotto super clamp arm and uh, magic arm, and I will attach it to my tripod and I do get a stable platform. But most of the time I'm just walking around, putting this up, putting it down, dragging it to the next shot. And I want to show you something that this pole has. This is called a Wooster Shearlock. And you can see that here. I hope it's in focus. Anyway, the Wooster Shearlock, they have come in different sizes. This happens to be an eight foot that extends another eight feet. So you get up to 16 feet. And I want to also point out, and 16 feet I find is a great medium. It's tall enough, it's not too big, it fits in my car. I have a little uh, Ford Fusion and fits right in. I put the seat down a little bit. I don't even have to open, I don't even have to put the seats down in the back to put it through into the trunk. It fits right in, works great for me. I think it was $35 at Home Depot, so it's reasonably priced. And uh, I have made this do-it-yourself um, connector here. And now I'm not one to do do-it-yourself stuff, but I'll find that it is better than this piece that I bought for $25 and this is called the uh, clicksnap.net so if you want to get one you can look that up but you could probably just contact me I'll send you this sell you this one I bought for 25 bucks I don't like it because the thread is smaller than what I want I'll show you in a minute anyway let me show you why I like this the first thing is this connector. It is a click connector. So instead of screwing it on and screwing it off, you can click it open and you can hear it connect. You can hear it click. I know it's in there. I know it's going to be sturdy and stable and it's fast. Let me show you how fast it is. Here we go. Full extension, down. On to the next shot, okay? So that's what works for me, and uh, I've done thousands of, of elevated shots now, and uh, I wouldn't use anything else. So the other thing I want to show you is not all holes are created equal. Now they come in round metal here. This is round, obvious fiberglass here, but the metal end, the extendable end on many poles is round. This one happens to be six sided. And the reason I chose this is because this is far more stable at fully extended than the round pole. And what you can do is go to Home Depot, go to the painter section, find a sheer lock pole, and you can actually fully extend it 16 feet inside Home Depot. Extend a round one, one that you have a choice, and extend the sheer lock. Take them and just go like this. Take it like this and flex it. Whereas this is flexing, but it's not flexing as much 
as the round pole. Anyway, that was really important to me because I've got some very expensive gear up here. Okay, now I choose to use a Sony a6000 for most of my elevated uh, photography, but I also use my Nikon uh, D750 and uh, I also have the Cam Ranger on it and a uh, usually a 16 to 35 lens or a 24 to 70. I've got about four or five thousand dollars worth of gear up there and it's quite heavy but I'll tell you this thing works great and at the beginning I found that if you put this up you can't reach the normal person that's um, about five ten and a half I can't reach it to go to extend it straight up because I was worried about doing it from the side and bringing it up but to be honest with you um, I would bring out a, a step stool get there put it up extend it bring it down take the picture bring it down and then move on to my next and carry my stool the way I do it now is I just put my camera on here I extend it here to full extension if I want and I can just bring it up like this straight up and then bring it down and run it down my hands and I have never dropped my camera never had a pull break this is my first and only pull now when I started I would put it against uh, I would put the base I would foot the base against maybe a car tire or a curb and walk it up but after I've done this a few hundred times I just started whipping it up and whipping it down and I just it's like part of my shooting now I'm also shooting most of the time with an a6000 so I really recommend getting a little camera and the other thing I recommend you've got to have because I can't even imagine using pole photography without it is remote tethering so you need either a cam ranger or a Wi-Fi app or a DSLR dashboard whatever you use use it because you want to be able to compose your shots now another thing too is you don't have to have movability at the top because a lot of people think well I'm gonna need to have like a cam ranger uh, remote that removes the head you don't all you have to do is you push the camera forward back sideways turn it sideways that's all the adjustment you need so it's really nice and quick okay let me get into what I've got here now what I choose to use might be an extravagance to some and I totally agree but I like to get a nice little ball head now you can use any ball head here it doesn't have to be the best this is a really right stuff BH 33 I'm sorry BH 30 with a really right stuff lever clamp now I like this because I use it for a lot of things I use it as a travel head for travel tripod um, but it works great for me and my camera has an L bracket on it but whatever you're using, you can use any kind of a clamp, anything you want. And um, the reason I like this is it just, the camera comes on and camera comes off very quickly. But one thing you'll notice is you could actually, um, you couldn't do this connection because what I've made is too, too big. I have, um, the cameras, most cameras are a quarter inch thread. And I've chosen to go with uh, 5 sixteenths because it's thicker, it's bigger, it's stronger. It's also stainless steel. But you could literally just screw your camera into, if you went with a, a quarter inch thread, you could screw your camera right into the top of here. You don't need a ball head, you don't need anything. So it's just mainly the quickness and the speed of doing it. So, and I do it so repetitively that it made sense to me. Okay, so I've got my ball head on top and I want to show you what I built. I'm going to pull this off here. Okay, put the pole down a second. By the way, this is what the end of the pole looks like. You're supposed to you're supposed to screw on a painter's pole. So you have to come up with some idea, something that will um, fit on there. And this is one of them. This is, as I said, this is the uh, quick clicksnap.net off of Amazon for 25 bucks. And that is a uh, quarter. I'm sorry. That is a, a quarter inch. Uh, screw um, so it is not as big I didn't feel comfortable with this I'm worried about the, the screw snapping off I don't know what the quality of the screw is it's Chinese probably um, but this will fit on there like that so what I came up with and I've been very happy I, I walked around Home Depot one day for about 45 minutes an hour in the plumbing department and the electrical department and this is what I found now let me put the pole down let me tell you what this stuff is this is basically PVC 
that has been painted silver to make it look more professional. Anyway, this PVC, I'm looking down at my notes, the PVC is one and a quarter inch in diameter. And the reason I chose this is because this, the end of the Sherlock pole, has one little screw on it, and it's just the head of the screw, and it doesn't do anything. And I don't know what it's for, but I took that out. This diameter is exactly, exactly the right size. It will not come off without massive forcing, and the PVC is really tough. So, I got that on there, and it works great. I am just super thrilled with it. And the other part I do is, now you can have this as long as you want. I've chosen about, uh, this is about four inches of PVC. And I use a little PVC glue, you know, it's just PVC. It's in the plumbing section. So I got this, and then I got from the plumbing section a little connector, as you can see here. This connector will screw on to this is my key. Here is the, um, this is in the electrical department. This is a lead pipe fitting that screws on, you can see it, screws on to the PVC like this. This is PVC and this is metal and it screws on perfectly and it gets a really nice snug connection. What I do then is I drilled a hole in the top of this connector and I inserted a, um, a 5 16 stainless steel bolt and this bolt is actually is uh, a two inch two inch bolt and again it is um, 5 16 so it's almost it's quite a bit thicker bigger better from in my opinion than the uh, what comes with a camera normally um, and what comes with that connector I showed you. So I put a nut on the inside and I put a nut on the outside and I left um, get my trusty measurement out again. I've got three quarters sticking out and with this nut on here I have about uh, three sixteenths of an inch sticking out that screws into my ball head. That's enough to go in there, not too much. Really nice little crank on there and it's solid, okay? So if you wanted to not use a, um, I'm sorry, if you wanted to not use a ball head, you could just, instead of the, um, the 5 16 screw um, bolt, you could just screw in a quarter inch bolt and go with quarter inch if you feel okay with that. But this is what I chose. Anyway, I'm going to put this all back together again. Again, just take out the screw in the Sherlock. I actually put a little bit of duct tape on there and when I pulled it off, the little sticky residue kind of actually even seals it a little better. But you can try what you want and a couple of hits like that and it's good to go. So let me uh, screw this in. Nice and tight. There we go. Beauty. Nice and tight. And I just set up my ball head so it's just level. No big deal. Doesn't have to be perfectly level. And you got to remember, you got to have a, um, a tethering, in my opinion to really make this successful. Now the next thing I'm going to show you is the end of my pole, which probably very few or if any people have ever noticed or have or have found this solution, which works for me. The Sherlock pole here comes with a rubber end here. So it would be like a grip if you were painting with a pole. Eventually that rubber grip from moving it around on the ground, moving it around, it's going to wear out. So what I did was just uh, at first I just did it to put something there. I put a piece of PVC you find in the garden section and just put it over there and I glued it on with some Gorilla Glue and it stayed on there fine. And at first I didn't really like it because it was making 
the rubber would make a nice, uh, would really kind of attach to the ground better. But uh, what I found is this end, this PVC end, is slippery. And it actually, I can now walk around with my pole dragging it on the ground. I'm not recommending you do that, but when I'm moving from shot to shot, and I'm just sliding it up the ground, and there, and it works great for me. Again, I'm using a Sony a6000 with a Samyang lens or a, a wide angle Sony lens. Um, it is really uh, light and I really can't impress enough. Uh, if you're serious about this, go get it. Even if you don't shoot with an a6000 or something in general, go get a little lighter camera for your, your exterior elevated shots. It's going to really help you and will make you faster. It's gonna be, you know, you'll feel better, feel a little safer. Anyway, what else can I talk about? I just think that, um, you know, the pole photography is great to do. And again, I'm going to show you how fast and easy it is to put up. Full extension, up there, whoops, up there. And even if it goes over a little bit, I can catch it, you know, you're going to worry about it when you first start using it, but after a while, you're not going to worry about it at all because it's like second nature. And uh, it's really, really um, just so easy to do now. And most of the time, it's just an add-on for me. A lot of people ask, do I charge for my elevated shots? I started and, and I found a lot of people didn't want to pay the extra for it because they didn't see the value in it. But now, I'll tell you, I get such better shots, such better angles, especially if it's a commercial, low commercial. I do a lot of commercial photography that are one story, real wide buildings. And it's hard to get a shot that makes it look good. These buildings aren't beautiful buildings to start with. They're just uh, construction projects or whatever. So, I mean, uh, we don't all shoot beautiful places for every shoot. So I find that the 16 feet up at a little angle sometimes or straight on, you're just going to get a shot that is so much, so much more effective and the clients are going to see it and really want to go with you. So this is Rich with Rich Bound Photography. I will put in the show notes some of the pieces and uh, you can also go to my blog. Just look up, do a search for um, building a better pole and building a better pole will probably get you right to my blog post or the Photography for Real Estate website, which linked me in there. Or you can look up um, Pole Photography 101. And I did a did a, uh, a whole blog post there a few years ago, and that's been helping people out. Um, but I will put in the show notes of what I use and the diameters and things like that. But go get yourself a pole. Uh, I tell you, all in all, forget the head. All in all, this is under 50 bucks. And it took me about an hour to buy and build. And it's, it's, it's paid for itself a thousand times. So very happy. This is Rich with Rich Bound Photography saying, see you later, shoot smarter, shoot better, and uh, really learn your craft, learn your camera, learn lighting, and man, you can start getting some great jobs. And uh, don't only shoot real estate. I shoot sports, and I shoot weddings, and I shoot um, headshots, you name it. It's all photography, you know, but uh, I really do enjoy the, the photography that we're doing today. Real estate um, and uh, design photography, new home photography, and even dabble in a little bit of architectural photography, which I'm not a real uh, trained architectural photographer, but I just shoot houses and buildings. So have a great day. See you later. Bye.